In this video, we are solving two-step equations containing fractions. We've got a few examples here, so let's go ahead and get started. In our first problem, we've got 2 fifths times m plus 9 equals 10. Now, a lot of times when I'm working with students and they see fractions and equations, there's a little bit of panic, but we're going to go through these step by step. It's really not so bad as long as you remember the rules of working with fractions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Let's go ahead and split this equation up. I like to draw a line down through the equal sign. That gives me a left side and a right side to split those sides up and help me remember that whatever I do to one side of the equation, I need to do to the other side as well. So let's identify where our variable is. Here we have m, and what's happening with m? Well, m is being multiplied times this fraction and then also 9 is being added to that m term so those are the two things that I want to undo I want to undo that multiplication and that addition when we are solving equations with more than one step we want to work in backwards order of operations order okay so that means that we are going to undo any addition or subtraction first and then work on any multiplication or division so let's go ahead and undo that addition of 9 by subtracting 9. We're going to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. That's going to cancel that out over there. And then we're left with 2 fifths m equals, and then 10 minus 9 gives us 1. Okay, so as we said, that 2 fifths is being multiplied times m. So let's think about how to undo that multiplication. Well, we know that the opposite of multiplication is division. So I could write this as dividing by 2 fifths, okay? Now let's think about that in terms of fractions. What do we know about dividing fractions? If I wanted to do 2 fifths divided by 2 fifths, what are the steps that we usually take when we are dividing fractions? like this. Well, a lot of times students will learn keep, change, flip, right? So we're basically turning this into a multiplication problem by multiplying by the reciprocal. We're going to take that second fraction and flip it, which is called the reciprocal, and multiply it. And then what happens here is that these twos cancel out and these fives cancel out. And that's what's going to give us that coefficient of one that we're looking for with m. We want a 1m left over when we're all said and done with this. So instead of writing it like this, divided by 2 fifths, I'm going to write this a little bit differently. So we're going to start thinking about this just a little bit differently, but in essentially we are doing all of the same steps. We're just taking a little bit of a shortcut here by writing it as times 5 over 2. Right? Instead of writing it like a fra like two different fractions inside of a bigger fraction, we're going to go ahead and skip that division step and go ahead and change that second fraction into the reciprocal and multiply it. Don't forget that we need to multiply on this side as well by that same fraction 5 over 2. So let's see what happens here. These fives will cancel out, these twos will cancel out, and we are left with just m, 1m on the left-hand side here. 1 times 5 over 2, well, 1 times anything is just that same number. So this gives us 5 over 2. Now that might be acceptable, or if we need to change that into a mixed number, let's go ahead and do that. 2 can go into 5 2 whole times, right? 2 times 2 is 4, with 1 left over. That's going to be our numerator, and then we're going to keep our same denominator. So we wind up with m equals 5 over 2, or 2 and a half. Okay, so with problem 1, we did just the basics of undoing that addition first, undoing that multiplication. I'm going to show you in problem 2 a different method called clearing fractions. We've got c over 4 minus 3 over 4 equals 7. Now there are a lot of different approaches uh, to solve this particular equation, but I want to show you one of my favorites when I see fractions, especially when I see more than one fraction in, a, in an equation then I really like to go ahead and get rid of those fractions so that I'm just working with whole numbers. And the way that we do that is we are going to multiply each term by the same number, and we're going to pick a number that will cancel out with that denominator of 4. Since we have 4 in the denominator of both of these fractions, we can multiply both of these fractions by 4 over 1, and that's going to cancel out with each denominator and leave us with just what's in the numerator. Now we can't forget that we need to multiply all of the terms by 4. So don't forget this part. Not just the fractions get multiplied by 4, everything does. 
All right, so this four and this four are gonna cancel out, giving us one and one, All right? So what are we left with? One C over one, that's just gonna be C. Anything over one is just that same number. So that's going to give us C there. All right, this four and this four, same thing is gonna happen. And we're gonna get one times three is three, one times one is one, so three over one just gives us three. We're gonna drop down that subtraction sign and that gives us three equals, and then seven times four is 28. Okay, so now that we have cleared the fractions, all we're dealing with now are whole numbers. We have no more fractions in this equation. So now we can just undo that subtraction of three by adding three. That's gonna cancel that out over there on that side and leave us with just C on this side, and then 28 plus three gives us 31. So that's our solution for this second problem, C equals 31. Let's try that same method with problem three, but this time we do have different denominators. However, all we need to do is just choose the lowest common multiple or the lowest number that all of these denominators will go into evenly so that it will cancel out and clear out those fractions, clear out those denominators. So I could multiply by seven for a couple of these and that would work for these two fractions. But if I multiply by seven here, that's not gonna clear out this denominator because that's, that's gonna leave me a two in this denominator. So we need to find the lowest common multiple, which in this case is gonna be 14. So I'm gonna multiply each of these by 14 over one, 14 over one, and I'm just kind of squeezing them in here. Uh, 14 over one here. Now be careful with these when you have different denominators. In our last problem, we had the same denominators. So our numerator was always one once we cross canceled. So our numerators were not really affected because when we cross canceled, we got one. So it was always just one times whatever was already in the numerator, one times C and one times three. In this one, when we cross cancel 14 and seven here, this 14 is going to become a two and the seven will become a one. So this is great, that's what we wanted, one in the denominator, that's going to get rid of it. But now we do have to remember that we need to multiply two times our numerator of five that's here. Same thing with this fraction, 14 and seven, we're gonna cross cancel those, this gives me two, this gives me one. So I just need to remember to multiply two times two B when I'm when I rewrite this. Here, the 14s are gonna cancel out to just be one and one, so this numerator is not gonna be affected. So let's see what this gives us once we rewrite all of this. This is all pretty messy, so let's rewrite it. So two times five gives us 10, over one times one gives us one, so that's just 10, right? So we've got 10 equals, two times two B gives us four B, one times one, again, is one in the denominator, so that's what we wanted. Anything over one is just that same number, so that gives us four B. Plus, and then all of this canceled out, nine times one is nine, one times one is one, so that just gives us nine. So now we are just working with whole numbers. So that, a lot of times, makes things a lot easier. Let's go ahead now and finish solving this by working in that backwards order of operations. So I want to undo this addition of nine. We're gonna subtract nine from both sides. And that's gonna leave me with one equals four B. And then four, is being multiplied times B, so we need to divide by four, divide by four here. That's gonna cancel out my fours, leaving me with just B. And then this is one fourth. Sometimes students might, uh, a common mistake that I see students making is they will call this four since, it's, since they see that one. When the one is in the numerator, we have to leave it as a fraction. So this is one over four. If this wound up to be four over one, that does equal four, but one over four, you cannot just change to just four, okay? All right, so that is our solution for that problem. Let's go on to number four. Again, we have a lot of fractions here, so let's see how we can clear those fractions. None of our denominators are the same. We've got a six, a five, and a three. So we need to find the lowest common multiple that will cancel out with all of these denominators. And in this case, I think that's gonna be 30, okay? So I'm gonna multiply each of these by 30 over one, squeeze it in here, um, and let's see what happens. So six and 30, those are gonna cancel out to one and five. 
5 and 30, that's going to cancel out to 1 and 6. And then 3 and 30, that's going to cancel out to 1 and 10. Okay, so I know that I chose the right number of 30 to multiply by because now all of my denominators are 1. That's what we want so that we only have the numerators to work with and then we can convert those into whole numbers. Let's go ahead and rewrite what we've got here. 1 times 5 is 5. 6 times negative 3w gives me negative 18w plus 2 times 10 gives us 20. All right, now let's work in that backwards order of operations to undo all of these operations that are happening over here on this right side uh, with our variable of w. I see multiplication, I see addition, so I'm going to get rid of that addition first by subtracting 20 from both sides. So that's going to give me 5 minus 20 gives me negative 15. And then drop down our negative 18w. And now we just need to divide by the coefficient. We're going to divide by negative 18, divide by negative 18. So that is going to cancel out there, giving us w equals negative 15 over negative 18. We can do some simplifying here. Our negatives are going to cancel out and give us a positive fraction, right? Negative divided by a negative equals a positive. And then 15 and 18, those can both be divided by 3. 3 is their uh, highest common factor. So let's go ahead and 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. And like I said, that's going to be a positive fraction because those negatives are going to cancel out. So we get 5 over 6 equals W for that one. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about solving two-step equations with fractions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the link in the description on my pre-algebra series. This is part of my pre-algebra series. I have a ton of videos going over different pre-algebra skills that you might see in a typical pre-algebra class, so give that a look as well. And I'll see you next time.